This world has been connected, tied to the darkness, soon to be completely eclipsed. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Kingdom Hearts final mix, Proud Difficulty video walkthrough. This is Agrabah still, and we're taking on Fat Bandits and Standard Bandits in the Treasure Chamber or Treasure Room. And there's also some shadows, so, you know, use your Keyblade as best as you can. And that is, oh, I love that move so much. Such a great move. It's just right now we're so limited by how little our MP bar is. Which, if you took the staff at the beginning of the game, I believe you have more MP. So if you're a really good Kingdom Hearts player or you're a confident player, you can do so to, to leave the shield or the sword and get the staff instead. And then you can take advantage of the, the rewards. But I've been practicing the guard on this game because it's something that I never really did when I first played because I was, you know, a terrible player. And it's one of the things that I love most about games. I love the ability to parry or deflect and counter. Countering is, is my cup of tea. It's something I, I just, I don't know why. I just, I love it, I really do. And this game doesn't have a, a very conventional counter, but it still has an interesting one. It has problems though. It's, it's kind of like Royal Guard from Devil May Cry, only much more flexible and nowhere near as responsive. So, in a way that in Devil May Cry, you could literally take no hits if you were good enough. In this game, because there's recovery frames to the animation of the block, you can take hits, which is a little bit sad, but it is what it is. And a lot of attacks can be blocked and it doesn't give you any kind of advantage, which I really don't understand because the timing is, is not what you would think it would be. Like, when you play a game like Metal Gear Rising where the timing is one to one and if you learn the animations, you can essentially block everything that's not, that's not an unblockable attack. On this game, you don't block when you think you should. It's not like a last minute thing. For some attacks, it's a before the enemy has even made their animation to attack you because it's so fast. And it reminds me a little bit of Dark Souls on, online where because latency is such a big thing, you have to predict to parry for the most time and parry before they even swing their sword. So this game is, is really like that in some ways. And there's an enemy called a, a pot spider, but I, I think he's like an upgraded pot spider. And he's one of the final mix enemies, and he drops the, he's the only enemy on the game that drops the Mithril Stone, which is an upgrade component that I'm going to do a video on how to get. And the only way to hurt him is to first parry him, which knocks him on his bum, and then you can beat him up. And at first I had no idea how to hit him or hurt him, and he killed me, and he pissed me off, and I didn't like him. But as soon as I figured out that what you were meant to do, he became significantly easier. And then when I learned how to do it well, you know, I really enjoy that fight now. But one of the parries is unbelievably just precise and confusing. And it's after midway through the fight, when he loses enough life, he does a different attack. He mixes up his pattern, he does a different attack, and his attack is he kind of messes with his claws, does a little bit of a dance claw with his claws, which is quite quick, and then he stings you with his tail. Because it's a pot scorpion, is, is its name. And what you have to do is... If you press block during any frame of his animation, he'll hit you. Regardless of how early, he'll hit you. If you press guard before he starts the animation, you'll guard it. And it's literally a thing where you sit there looking at him, waiting. And if he starts to move, you've missed your window. So there's this preemptive, you know, press it just as you think he's about to attack. And if you're too slow, or if you're too soon, sorry, he'll hit you. And it's... it's it's something to get used to, because it's not the most natural system. But on some bosses, it's really useful. Like, the, the flying magic using enemies, it bounces their magic back if you time it, which stuns them. Hades is a great example as well. Um, Hades does some, some pretty predictable moves. So if you, if you block one of them, it stuns him, and he gets stars around his head so you can beat him up and do a lot of damage. And it makes it a much more defensive and a much more strategic game than just bash X until something dies. And I like that a lot. And I did try it against Sephiroth and it does work to an extent. But the problem with him is he attacks so fast, he's got so much range and he does so much damage that you've really got to be on your game. So it means I'm going to have to practice a shit ton of Sephiroth to be able to 
to block him effectively. But ooh, I have practiced his, his cloud. And the standing combo that Cloud does, the parry after the block, is really useful against that because it shuts him down and you can hit him. And what will happen is once he's recovered or once he starts blocking, if you just give it a second, as soon as he starts to attack, if you press block, you'll, you'll knock him away again. And it seems to work wonders on humanoid enemies. Like Riku is exceptionally, you know, vulnerable to being teched with an attack or with a block. Both Riku 1 and 2, it happens to. And I tried it on the unknown, the, the secret organization boss who's in this game, who was added to Final Mix. But that guy's a douche, man. He beat me up so bad last night, I couldn't beat him. Like, it took me long enough to figure out that you have to hurt him with gravity. But more about him later. This is Jafar. And I can safely say, he's one of the easiest bosses on the game. Because this move here, he's going to put his staff in the ground and do an AoE. As long as you're not near the AoE, you'll take no damage. And all you need to do is chase him around this room and attack him. He does a move where he shoots a laser at you, which is extremely trackable. It will hit you at some ridiculous places, so make sure you put a wall between you and him, or you do dodge at the last possible instance. He also does a charge move, where he swings his, his staff at you. And then this one. When he starts glowing blue, if you're stood in the middle of the room, you are dead. If you hit him, it will cancel his spell and get rid of it. Completely ignore your team because they're going to spend this entire fight dead. The reason, they're going to run across the middle of the room and it's going to hit them with the blizzard every time. And the blizzard does wicked damage, except for right then. Because they weren't in the path of the icebergs, which means they didn't take damage. But did you notice how quickly they died? It's such a powerful move. But the good news, if you kite the outside of the room, it will never hit you. And Jafar stands still while he casts it, so you can do this. And then you just repeat. The only Oh, that's the laser. So I don't know if you heard him just then, but he does make a, a distinctive noise when he's going to do that move. So just you know, listen out for it. Try and keep your eyes on him. I'm blaming the camera just then because I lost the lock on and the camera didn't help me, so, you know, fuck him. But let's check his life out. Let's check his stats out, see what the book says. Just watch out for the AoE. It's not very wide, but it does some massive damage if you get hurt. So Jafar has 500 HP on normal. Oh, the genie can attack you as well. But because he doesn't want to, he warns you before he comes to swing. So he's really easy to avoid. But it says you get 600 experience. He's got 18 strength and 15 defense. And he hit me with that damn laser again. So, the strategy is its pretty simple. And once you beat him, you get Blizzara, which is useful. That is the melee attack. You can tell when he's going to do it because he starts to zoom in on you and his staff will burn. It'll be on fire. So just watch out for that. But you can lock... Oh, here comes Genie. So dodge Genie. There he is. If he'd stay still, or if there would be a way to to slow him down, like if he had stop at this point, even though stop doesn't work for too long, it'd still be interesting to see if you could get some extra damage off on him and, and do this a little bit quicker. But, bunch of rare combos, here comes Genie, dodge Genie, last few hits and he's going down. But he does get extremely evasive when he flies around, and you'll notice when he is in that orb form, the Genie seems to attack you a little bit more frequently than he normally does. So he's just being a dick now. Nah. But here he comes. Completely miss. Oh, that's one of the things that... That's kind of bullshitty. It hit me when I was clinging on. But there you go. That's the end of Jafar. And there's going to be a transition after this to the second phase of Jafar, which is Genie Form. And this next phase is just as easy, but the camera and the grabbiness of Sora might make you take a few hits. Because it sure as shit does me... So the strategy here is simple. You either hit Iago, who's carrying his lamp, or you hit the genie when the genie's tired. I recommend going for Iago, he's the easiest target, and while you're tracking him, you'll be moving away from the genie usually, so you'll be getting out of the way of the projectile he's going to throw at you. But as I've mentioned, frequently throughout this fight, because there are moving platforms, Sora will grab onto things, and when you hold down, it doesn't disengage. You have to press circle. And the big problem with this is, 
I'm conditioned to press down for the character to let go. And it just doesn't seem to work sometimes. And sometimes when you push up, sometimes he doesn't climb at all. So you're going to see moments where I'm just clinging on the side of objects like a tit for no other reason than I'm fighting the controls. And I get hit by the projectiles because I'm stuck in a static position clinging to something I didn't want to be clinging to in the first place. So once again, it's another one of those archaic moments of game design, which I'm hoping will not rear its head in Kingdom Hearts 3. And if it does, I'll be severely disappointed. But Jafar Genie has 750 life, he gives 730 experience, strength and defense are the same, and let's see how the fight goes. So the book says Iago is damageable, but they both share HP. And apparently Iago drops health balls, which is useful. But I'm proud, I don't remember seeing too much health balls drop. Maybe that's something that they, they moderated. So, Genie goes into the lava, he picks up a big boulder, and then he throws it at you. And the boulder will throw to wherever you are at the second he releases it. So, if you're just moving like I was then, the boulder is extremely easy to dodge. And I think a static camera would have benefited this room better. I think if they'd have pushed the geometry back towards the far wall, so that the genie couldn't come up on the opposite side of where he is now and he could have literally just been on that side the camera could have been where it is now pulled back a little bit and we could have just chased back and forth on the screen that way you would never be able to blame the camera and you'd never get that you see that that's when i got stuck and it just didn't respond so you know you you can't really complain because it's it's one of those things. It's something that used to be in game design a lot that just isn't anymore. And once again, I get stuck then, but I managed to get free. I don't know if you can hit that back at him. I wouldn't recommend trying it if you're going for a, a speed run of him because you're just gonna waste your time. Something else I've noticed as well. If you continue, it wastes the items that you use. So if you've just saved before a boss, load the game, don't continue because it's gonna waste your stock. I noticed this on Ice Titan yesterday because I was using Ethers against him and I'd used almost all my Ethers and I didn't even beat him the first time I don't think. Or I did and I used so many items that I was kind of pissed off so I ended up resetting it because you know it had already given me the trophy and you can fight him any time so it's not like you get cut off. But just the camera, the platforming, this fight is more a test of patience and gimmicky mechanics than it really is any kind of challenge. Like, the only reason Jafar's gonna hit you is because the camera screws you or the controls kind of trap you in, you know, really sticky platforming. Everything else is real simple. And uh, it's done. So there you go, folks. We've just learned Lucky Strike. Everybody levels up. And all that's left to be done here is to, to escape on the magic carpet. So... You can evade on the carpet and you can a strike, but I don't really see the point. Like, I've gone through this tunnel hitting everything on Proud, and I still didn't die, so... I think you should be okay here. I don't think you have to be perfect. And I don't think there's any benefit for not hitting anything aside from pride and, you know, showmanship. But it's one of those on-rail sections where you can't control as much as you would like to. Like, you can't go up and down, and there's some areas where you'd think you'd be able to some moments where you get hit by things where you don't think they should have hit you and other moments where they definitely should have hit you like this you can't control the vertical nature of the the damn thing and it looks like you're gonna hit stuff but you don't it's it's really strange but we get a new keyblade which is really good it's short range and it's great for crits and we also get a new summon so i'm gonna quickly swap to it and i'm gonna see you in the next video so thank you for watching and you take care now